Lieber Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super creamed blend, presents. Our friend Swan with my friend Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect blendship when other friendships have been forgotten. Theirs will still be hot. My friend Irma. Well, this is a wonderful spring day. Irma and I are at the window looking down below. On the sidewalk is an organ grinder with a monkey on a leash. Every time the monkey gets a penny, the organ grinder pulls on the leash and takes the penny from the monkey. Every time the monkey gets a banana, the organ grinder peels it for him. Irma's fascinated by this. Jane? Yeah, sweetie? Isn't it wonderful how the monkey has that organ grinder trained to do everything? (laughs) I could answer Irma, but after living with her for over a year, the cost of aspirin is keeping me broke. Telegram from Miss Stacy. Oh, I'll take it. Here you are, boy. Thanks, Miss. Oh, oh, Jane, don't open it. Why not? It's addressed to me. Oh, but telegrams get me so nervous. They always bring bad news. Oh, honey, that's preposterous. Oh, it's not. The last one I got told me my Uncle Henry had just gotten married. <laughs> What's bad about that? It was from his wife. He was already married. <laughs> That's just an isolated example. Believe me, anyone who's afraid of opening a telegram is a superstitious mid-Victorian nincompoop living in the Middle Ages. Irma, please open the telegram for me. (laughs) Oh, all right, Jane. Oh, Jane, I told you it's bad news. Someone in your family is executed. Executed? (laughs) Let me see that. Arrived today by train, excited to see you. (laughs) Irma, that's excited. Honey, it's from my Aunt Harriet. She's coming to New York for a visit. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. Dear old Aunt Harriet. Gosh, you know, it's been so long she raised me, Irma, when I was a little girl. She was so strict. I remember when she took me to the movies, if there was any kissing on the screen, Aunt Harriet would cover my eyes with her hand. Last picture we saw was with Clara Bow. Clara Bow? Wasn't she the girl who was supposed to have it? She may have had it, but I never got to see it. (laughs) Uh, Jane, is your Aunt Harriet married? No, no, she's a widow. Uncle Alvin left her a fortune. She's quite lonely, though. She's getting on in years. I'm her only living relative. Gosh, Jane, you may inherit her money. Oh, please, Irma, don't even say that. Why, it never even occurred to me. Why, why, I'd like Aunt Harriet to live to be... uh, Oh, my goodness, she's already past that. (laughs) Uh, Jane, is your aunt going to stay with us? Oh, I I don't think so, honey. I I know she'd be happier in some hotel. Jane, the reason you want to send her to a hotel isn't because you're ashamed of me, is it? Oh, Irma, of course not. And what about Al? Go on, say it. You must be ashamed of him. But I'm not. You must be. Everyone else is. (laughs) I'm not ashamed of Al, sweetie. It's just that Aunt Harriet happens to be a very straight-laced person. And while she's a shrewd businesswoman, I don't think she'd be interested in Al's deals. Oh, he wouldn't do anything. No. I can just picture the meeting. Aunt Harriet would come in, and before I could say, this is Al, he'd be saying to Aunt Harriet, because I like Jane, gonna let you in on a good thing. And before I can separate the two of them Al would have sold her a piece of property That could only be seen at low tide When the water is clear (laughs) Come in It's only me, Professor Kropotkin (laughs) Girls, I hope I'm not intruding But would you happen to have a spare doorknob? I'm terribly sorry, Professor But we just happen to be out of extra doorknobs Why do you want one? Well, I would like to hang it outside of my room. So when our landlady, Mrs. O'Reilly, walks by, maybe she'll see it and get me a door. (laughs) Oh, Professor. I was only trying to cheer you up. I thought maybe that telegram in your hand is bad news. Oh, this? 
No, no, it's for my Aunt Harriet. She's coming in for a visit on the 215 train from Chicago. Oh, entertaining relatives is no good, but I know how you can get out of it, Jamie. You've got to give her the shock treatment. Shock treatment? Uh-huh. You take her up to my room and turn on the lights. <laughs> oh, Professor, Jane, Jane's aunt is very rich. Oh, a rich aunt. Then, Janie, please meet her in my room. Maybe when she sees how I live, she'll adopt me. <laughs> No, Professor, Aunt Harriet isn't going to stay here. I think she'd be much more comfortable in a hotel. I'll get it. Oh, Jane, look who's here. Hello, Richard. Hello, Irma. Jane, Professor. Oh, Richard, you're just the man I want to see. Where would you take an elderly woman? How old? Mm, about 60. Oh, I wouldn't take her any place. I don't go out with women over 40. <laughs> Please, Richard, my Aunt Harriet's coming to visit me, and I want to find a nice, quiet hotel for her. Do you know of any? Mm, what about the plaza? Ah, the plaza does it. Come on, Richard, take my arm. We're going to Grand Central Station to meet Aunt Harriet. You be nice to her. Who can tell? Someday she may be in your family. Come on. Now, take it easy, Jane. Don't break my arm. I may be in your family, too. <laughs> well, in that case, I'll take good care of your arm. Someday I may want you to put that last remark in writing. See you later, folks. Gee, don't they make a lovely couple? Yes, Irma. And the way that Richard chases Jane, I have a feeling she's going to get away. You know, I can't understand why Janie's aunt shouldn't stay here. Gee, neither can I. It just doesn't seem right that one of Jane's relatives should stay at a hotel. Uh, I have a feeling that she's ashamed of me. Irma, darling, never think of that. I admit there are moments when Janie is annoyed by your little mistakes. Like the time you set fire to the bottom of her dress because she said she wanted a skirt with a flare. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure she loves you. Oh. It's me, chicken. Oh, come on in, Al, honey. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Professor. Hello, Al. Well, it's three o'clock, feeding time. I think I'll go back to my room. What do you mean, feeding time? Well, Al, a little bird built a nest outside of my window, and sometimes he comes back with extra bread. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Gee, chicken, wish Jane was here. I got a deal she can't laugh at this time. Well, I'll listen to it, Al. What is it? It's absolutely ingenious. I'm going to patent a long shoe with a compartment in the toe filled with samples. So when a housewife slams the door on a salesman's foot, he can still show her the merchandise. <laughs> what do you think of it, chicken? I like it, Al. Well, you don't seem very enthusiastic. What's on your mind, chicken? Well, I'm always proud of you and your deals, but... I don't think Jane is. What do you mean, chicken? Well, Jane has a rich aunt visiting her, and... Oh, I'll do that again. Do what again? But I said, Rich, your ears stood up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's this just a reflex. Like when someone says, here come the cops, my feet start moving. <laughs> you say this aunt of Jane's is rich? Yes, and Jane says she's getting on in years and is very fond of Jane. Oh, but, Al, I, I wouldn't want you to get any dishonest ideas. Chicken, that's hitting below the belt. You know my scruples. I'm only indicating a, a slight interest because I feel sorry for these rich dames. What do you mean, Al? Well, they all follow a pattern. They leave half of their dough to a relative like Jane, and the other half is wasted on some foolish thing like uh, a home for one-eyed goats or, or wayward pigeons, when with a little handling of this situation, it could go to you and me and our children. Oh, Al, when you say the word children, I hear the patter of little feet in my head. <laughs> so, Chicken, allow me to present my plan But, Al, we're not even related to Jane's aunt Oh, Chicken, forget that nonsense about blood being thicker than water That's propaganda I guess you're right, Al We can be as thick as anybody <laughs> Please, Chicken My only object is to get in solid with the dear lady Now, where is she stopping? At the plaza Good Now, we send her a little gift right off I know, flowers We could send her a, a brace of petunias a spray of violets on a background of gardenias. Or maybe a mess of orchids. Can't make up my mind. Why not, Al? Got no money. <laughs> Al, I, I, I'll be glad to lend you the money. Oh, no, chicken. I would never take money from you. After we're married and you're still working steady, that's different. <laughs> then it becomes respectable. Oh, Al, I'm so lucky to be going with a man of character like you. Well, you either got it or you ain't. <laughs> I just happen to be filthy with this stuff. <laughs> hello, Irma Renal. Oh, hello, Miss O'Reilly. My, 
Why, you look nice. You're wearing your hair differently. Oh, thank you, Irma. It's the new upsweep. Of course the professor don't like it. He said before I swept it up, I should have raked it. Ah, <laughs> uh, you look younger than ever. Uh, something we can do for you, Mrs. O'Reilly? Well, if you'd be so kind. My niece and nephew are taking me to a pig roast. Oh, and it's going to be so good to be back among all my friends. <laughs> now, my niece's little baby's asleep up in my room, and little Muriel Martin's going to sit with him. Now, when she comes home from school, would you give her this key to my room and these two dollars I promised her? We'll take care of everything, Mrs. O'Reilly. Thanks. Irma, dear, I dressed in a hurry. Uh, did I paste me eyelashes on straight? Uh, no, one is higher than the other. Oh, glory be, I must get my heels fixed. <laughs> Don't forget the baby. Goodbye. Al, you're putting the two dollars in your pocket. Chicken, you are now looking at the latest thing in babysitters. Who, Al? You and me. Oh, but what about little Muriel? She'll be here any minute to sit with a baby. Chicken, this is a competitive world. First come, first serve. You and I watch the kid, and with the two bucks, we send flowers to Aunt Harriet. But, Al, I, I don't know anything about babies. I know they have to be bathed and oiled and powdered, but I wouldn't know where to oil him. <laughs> you learn. Uh, but, Al, do you think it's right for us to be babysitters? Chicken, don't you see what a wonderful opportunity this is? This will be a test case of our marriage. Want to see how it'll feel to have a baby? Oh, Al, the... This is just like playing house. Now, you bring the baby up, and I'll get something for him to eat. Uh-huh. What do you got? Well, let me look in the cupboard. Now, let's see. Uh, graham crackers, ketchup, strong heart. Strong heart? That's dog food. Yes, I bought six cans of it. But, Chicken, you don't have a dog. I know, but it was such a bargain. <laughs> Skip the food. Open a bottle of milk while I go and send some flowers to dear Aunt Harriet. And I'll be right back with the baby. Oh, and, uh, Al. What, chicken? If anyone sees you walking upstairs with a baby, it might be embarrassing. So if they ask you if you're the father, just tell them you don't know. <laughs> Say, lady, do this. Feel a cake of swan. See how swan differs from other soaps. It feels smoother. As Susie Swan says... It's a smoothie. It's a smoothie. It's a cake of swan. You can feel the super cream blend. You can feel the difference in it. You can tell it in a minute. It's a smoothie. That's swan. Yes, the way swan feels is a direct result of swan super creamed blend. So next time when you unwrap a cake of swan, make this little test. Run your fingertips over the surface of the cake. Feel the smoothness. See how Swan Super Cream Blend makes Swan differ from other soaps. Then, when you use Swan for dishes, feel Swan suds. They feel richer, creamier. And Swan's look at your hands, you'll see they're left with a smooth, soft, young look. Swan Super Cream suds are thick, fast suds, too. And they rinse away so completely your dishes don't need wiping. It's true. Swan soap means faster dishwashing and protection for your hands. Thanks to Swan's exclusive Super Creamed Blend. Richard and I are at Grand Central Station waiting for Aunt Harriet. We've been watching the poor information girl answering questions. And I just had one of the most terrifying thoughts in the world. Imagine Irma Peterson as the information girl in Grand Central Station. <laughs> the Santa Fe would be leaving on Pier 28 for Paris. <laughs> People planning to go to Florida would be in Alaska just in time for seal hunting. The Honeymoon Express would be going to Reno. <laughs> you know, just in thinking about it, I'm so happy that we're going to whisk Aunt Harriet to the Plaza Hotel before she gets a chance to meet Irma and her intellectual companion, Al, the unemployed nature bum. <laughs> Chicken, when we're through with Aunt Harriet, she'll be putty in our hands. Oh, look, Al, the little baby's going to sleep. Ah, he's a cute little shaver, huh? Bless his little heart. Look how he snuggles next to you, Al. You know, you'd make the greatest father in the world. Who else would ever think of giving the baby a kitchen knife to play with? It was nothing, chicken. 
happen to know when a kid cuts his teeth, he has to have something to cut with. <laughs> and what about you, chicken? What a mother you'd make. Who would have thought of putting chocolate on his feet? Well, Al, that's a woman's instinct. At, at least now when the baby puts his foot in his mouth, he'll put on weight. <laughs> oh, let's face it, Al, we're just a natural for children. Yeah, we're a natural. And someday, chicken... <laughs> oh, Al. <laughs> <laughs> but, chicken, we got to remember one thing. We don't want Jane to find out about we're babysitters, or she might learn we use the money to send flowers to her Aunt Harriet. All right, Al, and while a baby's sleeping, I think I'll make his formula. Yeah, yeah, keep everything sterilized. Wear rubber gloves. Rubber gloves? Al, you're just like every man. He's a child. I can wear kid gloves. <laughs> How stupid of me. But fortunately, you know what you're doing. Hey, careful, little mother. You'll knock that basin over. <laughs> now you're woke it. Oh, I better pick him up. Shh, baby. Oh, Al, it... Isn't it cute? It, it feels so wonderful to hold him in my arms. He's so soft and helpless. I haven't had a thrill like this since the New Year's party when I had to carry you out for air. Chicken, gotta quiet that kid. He's making me nervous. Well, he wants something to play with. I I'll give him your watch. Oh, no, Chicken, not my watch. Well, he won't hurt it. Here, baby. Oh. He dropped it. I'm sorry, Al. Is it ruined? Well, Chicken, it was a Ben Russ. Right now, Ben looks fine, but I'm afraid Russ will never walk again. <laughs> oh, hand me the kid, Irma. I'll sing him a little lullaby. Take him, Al. Yeah. rock a -bye, baby on the treetop. When you grow up, please don't be a cop. <laughs> How do you like that chicken? He fell asleep. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that darn phone. You get it, chicken, will All you? All right. And if it's Jane, no cracks about us minding the kid. Oh, I know, Al. Hello? Irma, honey, this is Jane. I'm calling from Grand Central Station. Oh, that's nice. Bon voyage, Jane. <laughs> Irma, I'm not going anywhere. Don't you remember? I'm waiting for my Aunt Harriet. Oh, yes. Well, give her my regards. Well, she's not in yet. I don't... Irma, what's that sound I hear? Uh... What sound, Jane? Like someone was crying. Oh, 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 that's Al. <laughs> He's crying. <laughs> Al is crying? Uh, yes, uh, uh, his feet hurt him. But it sounded like a child. Well, Al has small feet. <laughs> well, what do you want, Jane? Well, honey, my aunt may have gotten off at 125th Street Station. If she calls the house, you send her to the Plaza Hotel, huh? We'll wait for her. All right, Jane, goodbye. Any news, chicken? Well, Aunt Harriet didn't show up yet. Well, she better. Ain't gonna sit up all night with this kid just so we could send her flowers. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Come in! It's only me again, Professor Kropotkin. I just wanted... Oh, look! A little baby! <laughs> It belongs to Mrs. O'Reilly's niece. We're sitting on it. <laughs> I mean, we're babysitters. Oh, it's such a sweet little thing. It's a shame something so wonderful has to grow up into a person. <laughs> I wish we could keep this person quiet. You, you got to have a feeling for babies, Al. You know, my brother Peter has got a wonderful system with his little son. When the boy starts crying... Peter reads to him from a book on child psychology. But what if he doesn't stop crying? Then Peter hits him with the book. <laughs> this is known as applied psychology. <laughs> it's applied where it'll do the most good. <laughs> but with such a small baby, you got to sing to him. Oh, we already tried that, but the baby refuses to go to sleep. No, Al, no, I'll handle it. Come here, little baby. <laughs> Baby face. You got the cutest little baby face. <laughs> I hope you'll never live to see my place. <laughs> You'd be a mental case. <laughs> oh, my darling little baby face. <laughs> oh, oh, I, 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 I scared him. I, 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 so, so I'll tell you what, baby. Baby, you stay here and, and don't go away. And, and, and I'll run down to the corner and buy you some candy. 
uh, jelly beans, a bit of honey, uh, maybe even a teething ring. Oh, they don't work. He's been chewing on one for 30 minutes. He hasn't got any more teeth. Um, you got to have patience. You know, there's an old saying, Rome wasn't built in a day. What's that got to do with babies? Nothing. This is a saying for veterans' housing projects. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> this is the hardest two bucks I ever earned. Wish that Mrs. O'Reilly would get back. Uh, Al, maybe the, maybe the baby wants to hear a story. Great idea, chicken. But I don't know any of them stories, do you? Well, I know the one about the three bears, but I always get stuck at the part where the little bear chops down the beanstalk and the Humpty Dumpty falls in the porridge. Could have sworn it had a different ending. <laughs> but in a spot like this, there's only one man to call. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. Got a baby here. What? See if she's got a friend. <laughs> No, no, Joe, I said baby, not babe. Look, Joe, you're a family man. What do you do with your youngster when he cries? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. But, Joe, don't you run out of youngsters that way? <laughs> Got a feeling, Joe, you're not a man to discuss children with. However, we'll call you when another problem arises. Goodbye, noble friend. Uh, no help, Al? No. Nope. <laughs> Oh, gee. Uh, maybe the baby wants to play. Great idea. Get the cards, Irma. <laughs> oh, no, Al. Oh, look. The baby likes you. He's going to sleep. Oh, great. Couldn't have stood it another minute. <laughs> oh. oh, that phone. Take the kid, Irma. I'll get it. All right. Hello? Oh, it's you, Al. Oh, yeah, Jane. Where are you? Well, we're at the hotel waiting for Aunt Harriet, but I can't understand... <laughs> Al... Al, what was that noise? Uh, what noise? Well, I'm sure I heard a baby crying. Baby? Uh, no, 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 that was Irma. What is this? A little while ago you were crying and now Irma's crying. Uh, uh, well, you heard that song, I Cried For You? What about it? We like to cry for each other. <laughs> well, I don't know what's going on, but I'm coming back to the apartment. Al, you and Irma better not be up to anything because Aunt Harriet may stop there first, and if you embarrass me, I'll never forgive you. Oh, have no fears, Jane. Everything here is normal. What you two consider normal terrifies me. <laughs> I'll be right home. Goodbye. Chicken, got no time to lose. Grab the kid. We're taking it back to Mrs. O'Reilly's room. Why, Al? Jane is on her way. And besides, her aunt... Oh, that must be the professor. Come in. Hello. Does Jane Stacy live here? Yes, she does. I'm her Aunt Harriet. Oh. Oh, well, how do you do? I, I'm Irma Peterson, Jane's roommate, and this is Al, the man whom I finance with. <laughs> it, uh, it is indeed a rare pleasure to meet one so fair and gracious and, shall we say, rich as you, Aunt Harriet. Oh, thank you. I told Jane to meet me, but I changed my plans. <laughs> Oh, what an adorable baby. Is it yours? Well, no, <laughs> that is... Well, uh... then it must be. Why, of course, I can see the family resemblance. <laughs> oh, it's got the Stacy eyes. It's Jane. Huh? Jane? Oh, I'm so happy. She wrote me she was going with the fellow, and I was hoping she'd settle down and marry. Who is the man? What's his name? His name is Richard, but... Well, I... here I am with the jelly beans for my little baby. Oh, the father! <laughs> Come here and kiss your Aunt Harriet. The father? Yes. And let me be the first to say he looks just like you. And let me be the first to say you're completely out of your mind. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute, Aunt Harriet. He's not the father. You see... Hi, uh, everybody. Oh, Aunt Harriet, what are you doing here? We were waiting for you at the station. Oh, at the last minute I took the play. Oh, well, no wonder. Well, Aunt Harriet, I want you to meet Richard Rhinelander. Richard, this is my Aunt Harriet. I'm glad to know you. Oh, let me look at you, my boy. So, Jane, you finally landed him. <laughs> what? How long have you two been married? Married? We're not married. Oh, please, dear. I've already seen the child. <laughs> oh, no. No, Irma's as old as I am. <laughs> She just sounds that way. I mean this baby here. Baby? Where? Uh, Irma Peterson. 
Al, what is this? I want to know what's going on here. They say it's not theirs. You say it's not yours. Don't look at me. I just bought jelly bean. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I insist on knowing whose baby this is. Please come in. Oh, it's little Muriel Martin. Look here, Mr. Al. I've been speaking to my mother, and she says you've got to give me the baby. It belongs to me, and I'm supposed to take care of it. Oh, certainly. Hey, I'm Muriel. Never want to deprive a mother of her child. Do you mean to say that... I do. Believe it or not, Aunt Harriet, that little girl is just another hillbilly bride. <laughs> Say, ladies, here's a tip that will save you money. Listen. Take advantage of that exciting lever buy two sale. That's right. You can save 50% on a beautiful modern aluminum saucepan. Just the kind of a two-quart saucepan with cover that's so useful in your kitchen. It's made of fine 18-gauge aluminum. And what's more, it has a no-twist handle. And both the handle and the cover knob are made of no-burn Bakelite. And here's more good news. This gleaming saucepan of regal aluminum ware is worth $2.00. But you can get it for only $1 if you take advantage of the Lever Buy 2 sale. Here's all you do to get it. Send in the wrappers from two cakes of swan soap. That's right. Two swan wrappers is all it takes. You can get handy order blanks at your store. Orders will be sent postpaid within three weeks. The offer expires August 1st, 1948. It's subject to state and local regulations. Send your money and wrappers from two cakes of swan and your name and address to Lever Homemakers Club, Box 1, New York City. Well, we finally got the truth out of Irma and Al, and we all had a good laugh, even Aunt Harriet. But Irma, having held a baby in her arms, cannot wait until she has some of her own. In fact, she's just finished knitting five little booties for the baby's feet. <laughs> Why anyone would knit five and stop, I do not know. So I said, Irma, why did you knit just five? And Irma said, Well, maybe I'll have twins. Yeah, but honey, that would just be four feet. Why knit five booties? Well, one of the twins might be a triplet. <laughs> you know, if you can figure that one out, I wish you'd come and live with my friend, Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Folks, next Monday evening, listen again to... Our Friend Swan. With My Friend Irma. Starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Professor Kropotkin was played by Hans Conried. Folks, on Poppy Day, there's only one way to be well-dressed. Wear a red poppy made by a disabled war veteran. Yes, wear a poppy. Remember, you'll be helping a disabled veteran and his family when you buy one. So be well-dressed. Wear a poppy. Frank Bingman speaking. Sprime. Cakes are light and high. Sprime. There's a reason why. Sprime. Cakes improve with Sprime. Rely on Sprime. Yes, there's a reason why Spry makes grand cakes. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the Spry one bowl way and be sure of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening as Spry's Cake Improver. For new cake-making success, try Spry, the pure all-vegetable shortening. Rely on Spry, S-P-R-Y. Rely on Spry, S-P-R-Y. Tune in next week one hour earlier and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, immediately followed by my friend Irma. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank <laughs> you.